Where I live, the weather can change pretty quickly. It'll be raining on my way to class, so I'll grab my rain boots, but by the time I get out, it's dry and so much warmer. Time to switch to sandals. Wouldn't it be great if I had one pair of shoes that worked for all my needs? I'm imagining a pair of shoes that are temperature regulated and waterproof. It might seem like designing a shoe to fit all needs would require magic, but I actually learned something in class today that makes me think that it might all be possible. It's this concept called bio-inspiration. The idea is that engineers can draw inspiration for their designs from the ways that problems have already been solved in nature. Plants and animals have characteristics that allow them to survive and thrive in a lot of different environments. Maybe I could use bio-inspiration to incorporate their characteristics into my super shoes. I went to the stone zoo to see if I might be able to combine a couple of the features of my sandals and rain boots. I was in search of some bio-inspired ways to help keep my feet dry and at a comfortable temperature. At the zoo, I met assistant curator Pete Costello, whose team takes care of all the animals. So what animal are we looking at now? Um, these are reindeer. So this is Apollo. Apollo was born here last year, and he, he's just really cool. And what about the patchy fur? Is that, what is that about? Um, it's, it's summertime, so they're starting to shed their hair. Reindeer have uh, a winter coat that's two layers. So they have the, kind of the outer layer, which are very long hairs, which are hollow and very close together, so the hollow hair is able to trap air, which acts as an insulator. And then they have their undercoat, which with him is the very fine white undercoat, which again is really short hair, but it's very close together. I see, so the, the shedding helps with the cold versus hot weather. Yep. Yeah, and their, their summer coat, because in the Arctic where they're from, the summers are very short, their summer coat's only gonna last about eight weeks. So oh, wow. their, their hair's gonna all fall out, they'll have that very short summer coat for a while, and the new winter coat will start growing in right away. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered how engineers could use a similar technique to create clothing or shoes that allowed people to easily regulate their temperatures. You know, being here in New England in the winter, you always dress in layers. Um, it's great for temperature regulation, so the more layers you put on, the warmer you're going to be. You're outside in the winter, you start to work up a sweat, you can just take off layers and cool off. Maybe I could use this idea of layers to engineer my shoes with some bio-inspired temperature regulation. I also asked Pete to weigh in on the second feature I wanted in my shoes, making them waterproof. Pete, what animal do we have here? These are North American river otters. So do otters live um, in the water or on land? Um, they actually live both on land and in the water. They do spend a majority of their time on the land. Interesting. So their fur must have to adapt to both environments. Yes. Yeah. The otter fur is very similar to the reindeer. They actually have two layers of hair. Um, the outer layer, they coat with an oil that they secrete. And you'll actually see them grooming themselves and smearing the oil all over themselves. Uh, and that makes them waterproof. Uh, the water literally beats up and rolls right off of them when they get out of the water. Uh, and they also have a, an undercoat, um, which helps them insulate. They're from the, the northern forest where it can get cold. And that undercoat never gets wet, so that the outer hair keeps all the water off of them. Because the oil, basically. Yeah, oil and water don't mix, so the water will literally beat, right. beat right off the otter's fur. How interesting. I could definitely take some bio-inspiration from the otters. Designing a fabric that water would bead up on, rather than soak into, would be a great first step towards shoes that keep my feet dry. The animals Pete introduced me to have some amazing adaptations that help them solve unique problems. Using bio-inspiration from those animals could be just what I need to engineer my super shoes. Something's been bugging me though. When I think of who develops clothing, I usually think of fashion designers. Engineers don't work on textiles, do they? Hi, Daniela. Thanks Hi. for coming to Ministry of Supply. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. With Ministry of Supply, we really want to make clothes that are a lot more comfortable to wear every day. We found that a lot of dress clothes are still made in traditional methods. They're using old fabrics like cotton, for example, and they're really great fibers, but they don't really adapt to our body as we go through different environments. We've seen how a lot of these materials have evolved for sports, and we wanted to bring that same level of comfort, same performance to clothing that you can wear to work. Clearly, Gihan and his team at Ministry of Supply are using new textiles, or fabrics, to engineer clothing that solves some of the same problems I've been thinking about trying to solve with bio-inspiration. 
Is this something that happens a lot, that you see something in nature that inspires you to then go and create something with technology? Absolutely. So when we think of that problem, we always want to understand how is nature solved before because nature has had lots and lots of time to come up with these solutions. And so sometimes the easiest way to solve something is to look at how it's been done before. To get a sense for how I might start designing my super shoes, I asked Gihan to walk me through the design process that he and his team use. When we start off, we first ask the question, how can we make a better shirt? And one of the interesting things we found was that a lot of our customers like to bike to work or they take the subway. We realized that our customers are going from hot environments to cold environments, then back to hot environments. And so we wanted to figure out a way that we could keep them at a very comfortable temperature. It's kind of like your thermostat in your house where you know, you're constantly adjusting the temperature when it's getting too hot or too cold, that we wanted to create a garment that almost had a thermostat inside it. Oh wow, yeah. that's so interesting, <laughs> great. Like a lot of engineers, Gihan and his team use the steps of the engineering design process to help guide them to solve problems. First. They identify the needs of their customers. It turns out that just like the reindeer, humans need ways to regulate their temperature. But without hollow fur like reindeer, humans need a little help from engineering to do it. Next, Gihan and his team investigate the problem by learning more about the science behind it. When your body is getting hot, what it wants to do is it lets out moisture. So there's water in your skin, we know is sweat. And when that sweat evaporates, when it dries up, we feel cool because that heat is going away from our body. This fabric has lots of little pores on it and it's kind of like a straw and it sucks the moisture right to the surface and then the sun will dry up that, that moisture and you'll feel a lot cooler. Gihan and the other engineers he works with imagined, planned, and created a new type of shirt to address the temperature regulation problem they'd identified. But they didn't stop there. In addition to temperature regulation, it looked like Ministry of Supply was also taking on another problem I was interested in. So I noticed that you have a lot of things that are labeled waterproof in your store. What does that mean exactly? Yeah, so waterproof garments are ones that keep us dry. We use a really interesting material that actually repels water. So the surface of it has a special coating that causes the water droplets to turn into basically little round balls and they roll right off the surface. It's actually very similar to like a duck's feather where it's covered in an oil and that oil actually repels the water. That's the same way the otters I saw make their fur waterproof, coating the material with something like oil that repels water. Gihan and his team investigated materials and imagined ways to make something waterproof based on some of the things they know about the science of water and membranes. I was getting very excited to start working on my super shoes, and it seemed like I could learn a lot from how Gihan and Ministry of Supply use the engineering design process. We'll make small batches of products. So once we get a product to a point we're really excited about, we'll actually launch it on the market so people can buy it. And then what we do is we take their feedback and actually incorporate that into the design of our next version of our product. You know, we were trained as engineers, and as engineers, you learn how to identify a problem, you then use your, your engineering toolbox to come up with some solutions, create some ideas. Uh, we then tested it, and we found we had to carry another version. And then we go through that process over and over again. And that's how you create really great products. And how do you know when you're happy with the product? When do you know that you've reached your goal? Yeah, so when we think of clothing, we think it should be something that expresses our identity, but also it performs for us. It also has its functionality. And so we want to make sure that we bring both of them together. Even when a product is done, Gihan and his team continue talking to their customers, communicating through marketing, focus groups, and articles about the innovative textile engineering they're working on. Gihan and his team have gone through the whole engineering design process with their clothing. Once they planned and created their ideas, they tested their designs and used the results of those tests to improve them. I'm only in the beginning stages of engineering my super shoes. I've identified the needs I want my design to address, temperature regulation and waterproofing. I've investigated the ways that bio-inspiration can help solve my problem, and I've looked at how other engineers have created materials as solutions. Now I get to imagine how I might design my super shoe and eventually create it. I'm still brainstorming other ways that I could use bio-inspiration to help me. What if I added some toe protection to the shoe, sort of like a tortoise shell, to prevent stubbing my toe? Or soft padding like a cougar paw to cushion my feet? 
Between the inspiration we can get from nature and all the things we can engineer, the possibilities are endless. Just think about what cool clothing and gear we can design using bio-inspiration.